हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज अभिषेक मोहंती एंड वेलकम टू लेक्चर नंबर थ्री ऑफ द चैप्टर इलेक्ट्रिक चार्ज एंड फील्ड इन लेक्चर नंबर टू वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द थ्री मेथड्स ऑफ चार्जिंग और इलेक्ट्रीफाइंग ए बॉडी द मेथड्स आर द मेथड ऑफ फ्रिक्शन द मेथड ऑफ इंडक्शन एंड द मेथड ऑफ कंडक्शन टूडे इन दिस लेक्चर विल डिस्कस अबाउट ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट लॉ नोन एज द कुलम्स लॉ इन इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स which helps us to calculate the electrostatic force between two point charges so let us discuss about that uh, so students in class 11 we had discuss about the newton's law of gravitation and that law helps us to calculate the force of gravitation between two bodies or between two masses it states that the force of gravitation between two masses is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and the mathematical formula to calculate the force between two masses is f equal to capital g into m1 m2 by r square g is known as the universal gravitational constant and its value is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square so similarly we have a law known as the coulomb's law which helps us to calculate the electrostatic force between two point charges and this law states that the electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges we know that uh, the electrostatic force between two point charges may be attractive may be repulsive if we have two like charges the force is repulsive force and if we have two unlike charges the force will be attractive force so according to coulomb's law the electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges varies directly as the product of magnitudes of the charges and inversely as the square of the distance between them so the statement of coulomb's law is similar to the statement of newton's law of gravitation so let us try to understand what is the meaning of this law suppose i have two point charges q1 and q2 we have two point charges q1 and q2 and suppose the separation between them is small r we have two charges q1 q2 separated by a distance of small r according to coulomb's law the electrostatic force between these two point charges f is directly proportional to or f varies directly as the product of as the product of magnitudes of the charges means f is proportional to q1 into q2 it means if we have a uh, charges having larger magnitude then the force between them will be larger and if we have charges of smaller magnitude the force between them will be smaller so f is directly proportional to q1 into q2 and the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them it means if we increase the distance between the two point charges the force between them will decrease and if i reduce the distance between the two point charges the force between them will increase and here you can say that the force is inversely proportional to r square means square of the distance it means if i double the distance the force between them becomes 1/4 if i triple the distance the force between them will become 1 by 9 times so if you increase the distance between the two point charges n times then the force will become 1 by n square times so force depends on q1 into q2 and depends on 1 by r square it varies inversely as the square of the distance between them so if we write combinedly then i can write that f is proportional to q1 into q2 by r square f is proportional to q1 into q2 by r square that implies f is equal to a proportionality constant k into q1 q2 by r square f is equal to a proportionality constant k into q1 q2 by r square and this k is known as 
कुलम्स कॉन्स्टेंट दिस के इज नोन एज कुलम्स कॉन्स्टेंट इन न्यूटन लॉ ग्रेविटेशन द कॉन्स्टेंट वॉज कैपिटल जी एंड हियर द कॉन्स्टेंट इज के बट स्टूडेंट्स रिमेम्बर दैट इन केस ऑफ न्यूटन्स लॉ ग्रेविटेशन द वैल्यू ऑफ जी वॉज सेम इन एवरी मीडियम एंड दैट्स वाई इट्स नेम वॉज यूनिवर्सल ग्रेविटेशनल कॉन्स्टेंट इट्स वैल्यू इज सेम इन एवरी मीडियम बट द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस के द वैल्यू ऑफ कुलम्स कॉन्स्टेंट इज नॉट सेम इन एवरी मीडियम द वैल्यू ऑफ के वेर इज फ्रॉम मीडियम टू मीडियम If you change the medium between the two point charges, then the value of K will also change, and that's why this K is not a universal constant. So, by default, the medium between the two point charges is taken to be free space or vacuum or air, and we always uh, deal with the SI system. So, the value of K for vacuum. and in si system is for vacuum or free space vacuum or free space and in si system and in si system k is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not k equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not and its value is 9 into 10 to the power 9 and what is the unit of k so k is equal to f r square divided by q1 into q2 so f means force so uh, newton newton into meter square divided by coulomb square so the unit is newton meter square per coulomb square or coulomb to the power minus 2 so this is the value of k in si system and for vacuum or free space now the question is what is the meaning of this term epsilon not epsilon not it means it is the electrical permittivity electrical permittivity of free space electrical permittivity of free space and its value is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 and the unit of epsilon not is inverse of this unit so it will be coulomb square newton inverse meter to the power minus 2 so this is the value of epsilon not and epsilon not is known as the electrical permittivity of free space or vacuum free space and vacuum they are same and its value is this much so students i had uh, told you that uh, the value of this coulomb's constant k varies from medium to medium if we talk about vacuum or free space the value of k is this much and the value of epsilon not is this much and this epsilon not is specifically used for this epsilon not is specifically used for vacuum for vacuum if the medium between the two point charges is vacuum or free space then you can write k equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not now the question is if the medium between the two point charges is not vacuum not free space the medium is other than vacuum then how to write the value of k for medium other than vacuum other than vacuum k is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon so students remember that if the medium is vacuum you have to write epsilon not but if the medium is other than vacuum you have to write epsilon and what is epsilon epsilon is known as the absolute electrical permittivity absolute electrical permittivity of the medium absolute electrical permittivity of the medium 
सो रिमेम्बर दैट द भैल्यू ऑफ दिस एप्सिलॉन और द भैल्यू ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रिकल परमिटिविटी वेरीज फ्रॉम मीडियम टू मीडियम इफ यू टॉक अबाउट ग्लास और वाटर और एनी अदर लिक्विड इफ यू चेंज द मीडियम देन द वैल्यू ऑफ एप्सिलन विल चेंज एंड इफ द वैल्यू ऑफ एप्सिलन विल चेंज देन डेफिनेटली द वैल्यू ऑफ के विल चेंज एंड दैट्स वाई द कुलम्स कॉन्स्टेंट डज नॉट हैव ए सिंगल वैल्यू इट वेरीज फ्रॉम मीडियम टू मीडियम बट रिमेम्बर दैट द परमिटिविटी ऑफ फ्री स्पेस इज द मिनिमम the electrical permittivity of free space is the minimum and that's why the value of k is maximum in free space or maximum for free space because k is inversely proportional to the electrical permittivity for vacuum the electrical permittivity has the minimum value and that's why the value of coulomb's constant is maximum for vacuum since the value of k is maximum for vacuum it means the force between two point charges separated by a distance is maximum in vacuum and uh, the value of the force uh, is less than is less in other medium okay so remember that for vacuum k is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not and this epsilon not is specifically used for vacuum but if we have other medium then you have to write k equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon so how can we write coulomb's law for vacuum so the coulomb's law can be written as f equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 by r square is that clear the coulomb's law for vacuum coulomb's law for vacuum can be written as f equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 into q2 by r square and in other medium the force will be f equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon f equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon q1 q2 by r square this is the coulomb's law coulomb's law in other medium is that clear so students we came to know that the electrostatic force between two point charges depends on the magnitudes of the charges it depends on the distance between the two charges and also it depends on the nature of the medium between the two point charges is that clear so i have written the mathematical form of coulomb's law in vacuum and in other medium so from this expression we can define the si unit of charge we know that the si unit of charge is coulomb and if i have two point charges q1 and q2 and suppose the magnitudes of the two charges or one coulomb means both are identical charges and the distance between them is 1 meter suppose i have two like charges each having charge 1 coulomb and the separation between them is 1 meter then if we calculate uh, the force between these two charges and here assume that the two charges are in vacuum or in free space so what will be the force between these two charges the formula is f equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 into q2 by r square what is the value of this quantity the value is 9 into 10 to the power 9 into q1 is 1 coulomb q2 is 1 coulomb and r is 1 meter so 1 square so f will be how much 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton it means if i will take two charges each having charge 1 coulomb and if i keep them at a distance of 1 meter from each other then the electrostatic force between them will be this much 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton so how can we define 
this one coulomb let me write the definition here one coulomb may be defined as one coulomb may be defined as that amount of charge that amount of charge which when placed at a distance of at a distance of 1 meter from another identical charge from another identical charge in vacuum experiences experiences a repulsive force experiences a repulsive force of 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton tamane jodi ame dui ta identical charge noba and uh, the value of the charge is 1 coulomb and if the distance between them is 1 meter the electrostatic force between them will be 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton okay so in this way you can define the si unit of charge means 1 coulomb and uh, we also have the CGS unit of charge. So now we'll discuss about the CGS unit of charge. CGS unit of charge. So we have two types of CGS unit. The first one is ESU. ESU means electrostatic unit. And the other one is EMU. EMU means electromagnetic unit ESU means electrostatic unit electrostatic unit and EMU means electromagnetic unit electromagnetic unit so the electrostatic unit of charge is stat coulomb charge ra electrostatic unit ho chi start coulomb and the electromagnetic unit is f coulomb electromagnetic unit is f coulomb so start coulomb and f coulomb both are cgs unit but start coulomb is the electrostatic unit and f coulomb is the electromagnetic unit and there is a relation among coulomb start coulomb and f coulomb and what is the relation one coulomb is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 9 start coulomb 1 coulomb is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 9 start coulomb and 1 coulomb is equal to 1 by 10 f coulomb this is the relation among the three units of charge 1 coulomb is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 9 start coulomb and 1 coulomb is equal to 1 by 10 f coulomb is that clear so this is all about the coulomb's law but students uh, look at this expression uh, the force between the two point charges in vacuum can be written as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 into q2 by r square so this is the magnitude of the force between the two point charges but we know that force is a vector quantity it has magnitude as well as direction but in this mathematical formula or expression we have not mentioned any direction so this is the scalar form this is the scalar form of coulomb's law but force is a vector quantity so we must uh, write the vector form of the coulomb's law so now we'll write or will derive the vector form of Coulomb's law. So in the vector form of Coulomb's law, we have to mention the magnitude as well as direction. So look at the diagram here. Uh, we have two charges Q1 and Q2 uh, on a plane and uh, this O is the origin. So R1 vector is the position vector of Q1 and R2 vector is the position vector of q2 so r1 vector and r2 vector are the position vectors of q1 and q2 respectively and r12 vector 
r1 to vector means the displacement from q1 to q2 displacement from q1 to q2 is r1 to vector and r21 vector is the displacement from q2 to q1 and you can see that uh, the magnitudes of r12 vector and r21 vector are same that is the distance between the two point charges whether you go uh, from q1 to q2 or you come from q2 to q1 you will cover the same displacement because you are moving on a straight line okay so r12 vector magnitude is same as r21 vector magnitude and that is equal to r the distance between the two point charges is r now f12 vector is uh, the force on q1 due to q2 f12 vector means force on q1 due to q2 and f21 vector means force on q2 due to q1 so now let us uh, write the vector form and we have to write the vector form in uh, two different cases the first one is repulsive force means when we have two like charges then the force between them will be repulsive force so let us write the coulomb's law the vector form of coulomb's law for repulsive force suppose q1 and q2 are the uh, are two like charges means there will be a repulsive force between them so f12 vector means force on q1 force on q1 due to q2 so if q1 and q2 are like charges then q2 will repel q1 and q1 will also repel q2 so f12 vector f12 vector uh, direction kota hobo na f12 hochi force on q1 on sorry due to q2 ta mane q1 upare q2 jo force apply karibo se force ro direction kemti rahibo like this kahingi na q2 q1 ko repel karibo force on q1 due to q2 so ida hochi f12 vector ro direction and you can see that this f12 vector is along r21 cap r21 cap ro artha kon r21 cap means it is a unit vector of the displacement r21 means displacement from q2 to q1 so r21 vector and f12 vector they have the same direction to f12 vector ko mo kem likhi paribe f12 vector is equal to first we'll write the uh, magnitude and then we'll write the direction so f12 vector is equal to k into q1 q2 by r square this is the magnitude part and the direction will be along r21 cap so i can write r21 cap is that clear so this is the magnitude part and this is the direction part now let us write the expression for f21 vector means uh, the force on q2 q2 upare jo force asibo due to q1 q2 upare jo force asibo due to q1 so again since we have taken like charges so q1 q2 ko repel karibo along this direction so it ha hochi f21 vector ra direction f21 vector ra direction and you can see that f21 vector has the same direction as r12 cap r12 cap means a uh, unit vector of the displacement from q1 to q2 so how can i write the vector form of f21 vector first write the magnitude which is k q1 q2 by r square magnitude same rahibo f12 or f21 ro magnitude same rahibo but the direction of f21 vector is along r12 cap along r12 cap okay so this is the vector form of coulomb's law and remember that this r12 cap and r21 cap r12 cap and r21 cap they are oppositely directed so i can write that r12 cap is equal to minus of r21 cap because they have opposite directions so i can write f21 vector f21 vector like this k into q1 q2 by r square r12 vector place re mu likhi paribi 
माइनस ऑफ आर टू वन कैप इज दर क्लियर इन प्लेस ऑफ आर वन टू कैप आई कैन राइट माइनस ऑफ आर टू वन कैप एंड आई कैन टेक दिस माइनस आउटसाइड माइनस ऑफ के क्यू वन क्यू टू बाई आर स्क्वेर इन टू आर टू वन क्या सो ब्राकेट भर जहाँ रहा मैं के क्यू वन क्यू टू बर स्क्वेर इन टू आर टू वन क्या दिस इज नथिंग बट एफ वन टू फैक्टर एफ वन टू फैक्टर इज इक्वल टू के क्यू वन क्यू टू बै आर स्क्वेर इन टू आर टू वन क्या सो ये जो ब्राकेट भर जो टर्म अच्छी दिस इज नथिंग बट एफ वन टू फैक्टर एंड गिव ए नेगेटिव साइन हियर सो हमें कौन पाइले ना f21 वेक्टर इज इक्वल टू माइनस ऑफ f12 वेक्टर इट मींस द फोर्स ऑन q2 ड्यू टू q1 इज नेगेटिव ऑफ द फोर्स ऑन q1 ड्यू टू q2 एंड यू कैन सी दैट द मैग्नीट्यूड्स ऑफ द टू फोर्सेस आर इक्वल दुईटा फोर्स ऑफ मैग्नीट्यूड सेम अछि त माने Q1 Q2 Q1 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 Q2 amount of force apply Q2 Q1 Q1 force apply apply Q2 Q2 but the the directions of the two forces will be opposite. So it is clear that the Coulomb's law also obeys the Newton's third law motion. Every action has equal and opposite reaction. Q1 Q2 amount of force amount of force apply Q2 Q1 same amount of force apply Q2 but opposite direction रे so from this discussion we came to know that the coulomb's law also obeys newton's third law of motion so this is the uh, vector form of coulomb's law for repulsive force means if we have two like charges ebe me discuss kariba the vector form of coulomb's law for attractive force attractive force kete lasibo if we have two unlike charges gote thibo positive gote thibo negative again look at this diagram here we have two point charges q1 and q2 and these are unlike charges ta mane there exist an attractive force between them so all these things will be same ta mane f1 to the meaning kon na force on q1 due to q2 f21 the meaning kon force on q2 to q2 due to q1 ta dekho q1 ko q2 attract karibo q1 ko q2 attract karibo so f1 to vector f1 to vector the meaning kon na force on q1 due to q2 q1 upare q2 jo force apply karibo se force ra direction kem thribo towards q2 kahe ki na q2 q1 ko attract karuchi first kaise kon hotla na q1 ko q2 repel karutla so the force f1 to was along this direction but a case re kon hobo since we have unlike charges so there will be attractive force between the two charges so q1 ko q2 jo attract karibo towards itself okay so you can see that f1 to vector is along r1 to cap eti kon hotla f1 to vector was along r2 to one cap but eti kon hobo f1 to vector is along r1 to cap similarly q2 ko q1 attract karibo and that attractive force is towards q1 q1 will attract q2 so f21 vector f21 vector is directed along this direction ta mane f21 vector direction will be along r21 cap so how can we write the vector form f12 vector kete asibo first write the magnitude k q1 q2 by r square into r 1 to cap just look at the difference eti kon hotla f 1 to vector thila k q 1 q 2 by r square r 2 1 cap thila but eti kon asibo f 1 to vector is equal to k q 1 q 2 by r square r 1 to cap and f 2 1 vector kete asibo k q 1 q 2 by r square r 2 1 cap in the first case f 2 1 vector kete thila k q 1 q 2 by r square r 1 to cap thila so the change in this direction is due to the nature of force first case re i am discuss kartle about repulsive force second case i am discuss kartle about attractive force again r 2 1 cap is equal to minus of r 1 to cap ta vartaman ame f 2 1 vector 
एफ टू वन भेक्टर लिखा है ठीक के क्यू वन क्यू टू बाई आर स्क्वेर इन प्लेस ऑफ आर टू वन क्या आई कैन राइट माइनस ऑफ आर वन टू क्या इज देट क्लियर इन प्लेस ऑफ आर टू वन क्या आई कैन राइट माइनस ऑफ आर वन टू क्या एंड टेक दिस माइनस आउट साइड कौन है जीवा के क्यू वन क्यू टू बाई आर स्क्वेयर आर वन टू क्या एंड द ब्रैकेटेड टर्म इज नथिंग बट एफ वन टू भेक्टर एफ वन टू भेक्टर कहते हैं ना के क्यू वन क्यू टू बाई आर स्क्वेयर आर वन टू क्या सो आई कैन राइट दैट एफ टू वन भेक्टर इज इक्वल टू माइनस दिस इज एफ वन टू भेक्टर इज दैट क्लियर सो एट्रैक्टिव फोर्स रो कि रिपल्सिव फोर्स रो एफ वन टू भेक्टर एंड एफ टू वन भेक्टर विल हाव द सेम मैग्निच्यूड एंड अपोजिट डायरेक्शन तार मिनिंग है या जे कुलम्स लॉ ओबेस द न्यूटन थर्ड लॉ ऑफ मोशन सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द वेक्टर फॉर्म ऑफ कुलम्स लॉ सो नाउ विल डिस्कस सम मोर पॉइंट्स अबाउट दिस कुलम्स फोर्स सो लेट इज टॉक अबाउट फ्यू इंपोर्टेंट पॉइंट्स अबाउट दिस कुलम्स लॉ द फर्स्ट वन इज दिस कुलम्स लॉ होल्ड्स गुड फॉर पॉइंट चार्जेस एट रेस्ट तम लुक एट द स्टेटमेंट द स्टेटमेंट इज अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक फोर्स सो इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक मिनिंग कौन इलेक्ट्रो मीन्स चार्ज स्टैटिक मीन्स एट रेस्ट सो जदि चार्ज रेस्ट थे इन दैट केस यू कैन अप्लाय कुलम्स ला टू फाइंड द फोर्स बिट्वीन दैम बट इफ द चार्ज इज मुविंग देन कन्स्टाटली द डिस्टेंस बिट्वीन द टू पॉइंट चार्जेस विल चेंज सो इन दैट केस वी कैन नट यूज द कुलम्स ला सो रिमेम्बर दैट इज कुलम्स ला होल्ड्स गुड फर द पॉइंट चार्ज एट रेस्ट आउ जदि चार्ज मैंने मुव करने स्टार्ट करेंगे देन इन एडिशन टू इलेक्ट्रिक फिल्ड दे विल अल्सो प्रड्यूस ए मैग्नेटिक फिल्ड एंड द फोर्स विल अल्सो चेंज एंड दैट टपिक विल डिस्कस्ड इन द अबकमिंग क्लासेस बट रिमेम्बर दैट द कुलम्स ल होल्ड्स गुड फर पॉइंट चार्जेस एट एट रेस्ट ओनली द सेकेंड पॉइंट इज दैट इट ओबेज द इनवर्स स्क्वेर लफ डिस्टेन्स हमें आम पढ़ले फोर्स बिटवीन टू पॉइंट चार्जेस इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द स्क्वेर ऑफ द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दे सो इट ओबेज द इनवर्स स्क्वेर लॉ ऑफ डिस्टेंस तमें आर बढ़ले फोर्स डिक्रीज हम स्क्वेर टाइम्स डिक्रीज हम द थर्ड पॉइंट इज दैट द कुलम्स फोर्स इज ए सेंट्रल फोर्स सो सेंट्रल फोर्स रिनिंग कौन व्हाट इज द मिनिंग ऑफ सेंट्रल फोर्स सो सेंट्रल फोर्स मीन्स a force is said to be a central force if it acts along the line acts along the line joining the two bodies joining the two bodies so if we take two point charges q1 and q2 then this is the line joining the two charges and the coulombic force the force may be attractive force the force may be repulsive force that force will act along this line the coulombic force will act along the line joining the two charges the force will never act along a line like this or a line like this or a line like this no the force will act along the line joining the two charges and that's why the coulomb's force is known as a central force the fourth point is that the range of coulombic force is from nuclear range means uh, 10 to the power minus 15 meter to very large distances like uh, 10 to the power 18 meter ta mane coulombic force ta bahut small distance re kamne valid hobo and also bahut large distance re madhye seta valid hobo ta mane 10 to the power minus 15 meter ba 1 for me is a very very small distance तो ये स्मल डिस्टेंस कुलम्स ल ओबे कर इज भैलीड एंड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट ए वेरी लार्ज डिस्टेंस एज लार्ज एज टेन टू दि पर एट मीटर तो मैंने माइक्रोस्कोपिक और माइक्रोस्कोपिक वर्ल्ड में कुलम्स ल भैलीड सो दिज आर सम इम्पोर्टां पॉइंट्स अबाउट कुलम्स ल एंड एम डिस्कस कर गोटे नेक्स्ट टपिक जोटा हूँ डायलेक्ट्रिक कन्स्टाट बा रिलेटिव परमिटिविट सो व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द टर्म डायलेक्ट्रिक कन्स्टाट और रिलेटिव परमिटिविट बोथ आर सेम डायलेक्ट्रिक कन्स्टाट एंड रिलेटिव परमिटिविट बोथ आर सेम सो लेट डिस्कस अबाउट द मिनिंग अफ दिज टू टर्म्स 
डायलेक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टेंट और रिलेटिव पॉर्मेटिविटी सो स्टूडेंट्स सपोज वी हैव टू चार्जेस Q1 वन एंड क्यू टू सेपरेट बाई डिस्टेंस आर एंड द टू चार्जेस आर प्लेस इन वैक्यूम सो वट विल बी द फोर्स बिटवीन दीज टू चार्जेस एफ वैक्यूम एफ वैक्यूम कहते हैं वो एफ वैक्यूम मीन्स द फोर्स बिटवीन टू चार्जेस प्लेस इन वैक्यूम सो अकॉर्डिंग टू कुलम्स लॉ एफ वैक्यूम विल बी वन बाय फोर पाई एफ सी लॉ नॉट क्यू वन इंटू क्यू टू बाई आर स्क्वेयर Where epsilon naught is the electrical permittivity of vacuum or free space. Now, if I place the same two charges separated by the same distance in other medium, then the force between the two charges in other medium. कितना है सिर्फ़ one by four pi epsilon q1 into q2 by r square. तो first case रहे मैं कौन करी चाहे दो डा चार्ज को वैक्यूम रे रखी छे एंड द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन देम इज आर इन द सेकंड केस हमें कोन करी छे से सेम चार्ज को हमें सेम डिस्टेंस आर रे रखी छे बट इन अदर मीडियम द मीडियम मे बी ग्लास द मीडियम मे बी वाटर और एनी अदर लिक्विड सो जदी हमें बे बाहर करे व्हाट इज द रेशियो ऑफ दीस टू फोर्सेस त माने एफ वैक्यूम डिवाइडेड बाय एफ मीडियम लेट अस फाइंड The ratio of these two forces, F vacuum by F medium. So I can write one by four pi epsilon naught q one q two by r square divided by F medium. कहते one by four pi epsilon q one q two by r square. So they will cancel. Four pi four pi cancels. लाइक तो ही जो तो ही जो epsilon by epsilon naught. सो आम एवं कौन पाइले ना एफ भैक्यूम डिवाइड बाय एफ मीडियम इज इक्वल टू एप्सिलन बाय एप्सिलन नॉट मींस द रेशियो ऑफ द एब्सोल्यूट इलेक्ट्रिकल परमिटिविटी ऑफ द मीडियम टू द इलेक्ट्रिकल परमिटिविटी ऑफ फ्री स्पेस सो दिस टर्म एप्सिलन बाय एप्सिलन नॉट इट इज नोन एज एप्सिलन आर एप्सिलन आर epsilon r means the relative permittivity the relative permittivity or this epsilon r is sometimes written as capital k small k is coulomb's constant this is capital k this is known as the dielectric constant dielectric constant so remember that this ratio epsilon to epsilon not is known as the relative permittivity relative permittivity means we are comparing the permittivity of a given medium with vacuum or with free space and the epsilon r can also be written as k this is known as the dielectric constant so now uh, the question is how can we define uh, the relative permittivity so you can say that uh, the relative permittivity of a medium may be defined as the ratio of the absolute electrical permittivity of that medium to the electrical permittivity of free space epsilon by epsilon not is equal to epsilon r or k so f vacuum divided by f medium is equal to k that implies f medium is equal to f vacuum by k is that clear ta mane jodi dui ta charge bhitare electrostatic force in vacuum amku jana achi then if we take the two charges and place in some other medium ta se other medium re सेमन का भीतर फोर्स कते आसीबो वी कैन कैलकुलेट बाय यूजिंग दिस फार्मूला एंड वी हैव टू नो व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ के हमें जो मीडियम रे प्लेस करू छे से मीडियम रो डायलेक्टिक कांस्टेंट यदि हमको मालूम थिबो देन वी कैन इजीली कैलकुलेट व्हाट विल बी द फोर्स बिटवीन द सेम टू चार्जेस इन दैट मीडियम सो एफ मीडियम इज इक्वल टू एफ वैक्यूम बाय के सो नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट विल बी द यूनिट एंड डायमेंशन ऑफ This uh, relative permittivity or dielectric constant. The answer is 
डायलेक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टेंट और रिलेटिव परमिटिविटी इज यूनिटलेस एंड डायमेंशनलेस बिकॉज दिस डायलेक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टेंट और रिलेटिव परमिटिविटी इज द रेशियो ऑफ टू सिमिलर क्वांटिटीज फोर्स बाय फोर्स परमिटिविटी बाय परमिटिविटी सो द यूनिट विल कैंसल मीन्स द डायलेक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टेंट इज ए प्योर रेशियो इट डजन हैव एनी यूनिट और डायमेंशन and this is the formula to calculate the force between two charges in a given medium if we know the force between the same two charges in vacuum and we know the dielectric constant of the given medium is that clear and students remember that the dielectric constant the dielectric constant for metal is इनफाइट मेटाल कंडक्टर पर डायलेक्ट्रिक कन्स्टाट रैल्यू के इनफाइट एंड फर भैक्यूम फर भैक्यूम के केते के हूँ वन द भैल्यू ऑफ द डायलेक्ट्रिक कन्स्टाट और रिलेटिव परमिटिविटी ऑफ भैक्यूम विल बी वन कहीं ना आम जो मीडियम रिलेटिव परमिटिविटी डायलेक्ट्रिक कन्स्टाट कालकुलेट कर तार एब्सल्यूट परमिटिविटी ऊपर रही है एंड वी हैव टू डिवाइड दैट विथ द परमिटिविटी ऑफ फ्री स्पेस सो इफ वी वांट टू कैलकुलेट द रिलेटिव परमिटिविटी ऑफ वैक्यूम देन से कहते हैं एफसी नॉट बाय एफसी नॉट एंड दैट इज इक्वल टू वन सो द डायलेक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टेंट ऑफ वैक्यूम इज वन द डायलेक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर मेटल इज इनफाइट एंड फॉर अदर मीडियम अदर मीडियम तमाने एक्सेप्ट मेटल्स एंड वैक्यूम द वैल्यू ऑफ के लाइज बिटवीन वन एंड इनफाइट इज दैट क्लियर एंड रिमेम्बर दैट फॉर एनी अदर मीडियम द वैल्यू ऑफ के इज मोर देन वन फॉर वैक्यूम द वैल्यू ऑफ के इज वन माने डायलेक्ट्रिक कॉन्स्टेंट बा रिलेटिव परमिटिविटी रो मिनिमम वैल्यू होची 1 इज दैट क्लियर एंड इफ वी कंसीडर मेटल्स द वैल्यू ऑफ के इज इनफाइट बट इफ वी कंसीडर सम मीडियम व्हिच इज नाइदर मेटल नॉर वैक्यूम ता पई के रहल कते आसीबो इट विल लाई बिटवीन 1 एंड इनफाइट सो स्टूडेंट सेकंड क्लास रे आमे जो डिस्कस करले अबाउट द मेथड ऑफ इंडक्शन मुझे गोटे फर्मुला कही द रिलेशन बिटवीन द इंड्यूस्ड चार्ज एंड इंड्यूसिंग चार्ज क्यू डैस इज इक्वल टू माइनस क्यू वन माइनस वन बै के सो जदि आम गोटे मेटालिक स्फिअर नहीं थे मेटालिक स्फिअर में आम चार्ज इंड्यूस कर तो के रैल्यू के इनफाइट हो सो फर मेटल्स फर मेटल्स हम लिखी परबा q डैस इज इक्वल टू माइनस q 1 माइनस 1 बाय इनफाइट एंड 1 बाय इनफाइट इज इक्वल टू 0 सो q डैस केते हे जबो माइनस q त माने इंड्यूसिंग चार्ज रो वैल्यू जहा थिबो इंड्यूस्ड चार्ज रो वैल्यू शेयर हेबो बट ऑपोजिट पोलराइट हेबो त माने जदि हमें 10 माइक्रो कूलम रो इंड्यूसिंग चार्ज नै छे ताले गोटे मेटालिक बडी माइनस टेन माइक्रो कुलम रूस चार्ज आम पाइबा इज दैट क्लीयर बट इफ वी टेक सम मीडियम और सम मेटेरियल व्हिच इज नॉट ए मेटल व्हिच इज ए इन्सुलेटर तो से केस कौन हम के रैल्यू विल बी मोर देन वन बट नॉट इनफाइट तो से केस कौन हम क्यू डैस रैग्निच्यूड विल बी लेस देन क्यू सो रिमेम्बर दैट द मैग्निच्यूड अफ इंड्यूस्ड चार्ज can never be greater than the magnitude of inducing charge it can be either equal or less than the inducing charge is that clear so the meaning of dielectric constant means this ratio f vacuum by f medium or epsilon by epsilon not i mean jo medium ra dielectric constant ko calculate kariba sei medium ra absolute permittivity को डिवाइड करवा विथ द एब्सल्यूट परमिटिविटी ऑफ फ्री स्पेस सो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे इन दिस क्लास वी डिस्कस अबाउट द कुलम्स लॉ 
its vector form then some important points about coulomb's law and about the dielectric constant or relative permittivity hopefully you have understood all the concepts that has been covered in this uh, class uh, in the next class we will discuss about the superposition principle of coulomb's law so till then bye bye and have a nice day